aldosterone and renal tubule. Aldosterone is the strongest naturally occurring mineral corticoid in human. It promotes sodium and the water reabsorption by distal tubule and collecting duct while promoting renal potassium and hydrogen ion secretion. Come with the mechanism of action of aldosterone. Aldosterone is a steroid hormone and this aldosterone binds with the cytoplasmic receptor not on receptor on the cell membrane and after binding with the receptor this hormone receptor complex moves to the nucleus where it induces the translation of mRNA and this increases the production of protein which brings about the function. Now, what is happening here? Now, aldosterone is binding directly with the cytoplasmic receptor. Then this HR complex means hormone receptor complex moving towards the nucleus where it forms some protein called serum glucocorticoid regulated gene. This is SGK and other protein also. This SGK is an early response gene that increases the production of epithelial sodium channels activity. Allosterone also increases the mRNA activity for the synthesis of proteins that form subunit of epithelial sodium channel. And whenever it is required to reabsorb the sodium from renal tubule this epithelial sodium channel will move towards the luminal side of the cell and helps to reabsorb sodium from the lumen to inside the cell other mechanism of action is non-genomic how it acts it acts by stimulating the action of production of sodium potassium pump at the basal side of the principal cell or it helps the activity of the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump in the intercalated cell of kidney. Now aldosterone has action on the distal table and also the collecting duct. First with on the distal table. Here is a diagram of a tubular cell and this has both sides. One is the luminal surface another one is the basal surface this is the basal surface this is the tubular cell and this is the luminal surface aldosterone helps sodium and the chloride reabsorption from the luminal surface of the tubular cell to the blood how it is happening this is the symporter which reabsorb both sodium and chloride with the help of aldosterone and goes inside the tubular cell. From the tubular cell, the sodium reabsorbed to the blood by this help of sodium potassium ATPase pump. Whereas the chloride come 
through the paracellular pathway to the blood along with the symporter potassium. Now the action on collecting duct. There are two special cells in the collecting duct. One is called principal cell and another one is intercalated cell. What is the function? As we know, the principal cell with the help of the aldosterone, it forms epithelial sodium channel. And this epithelial sodium channel helps the reabsorption of the sodium from the luminal surface to the inside the cell. And after coming to the tubular cell, aldosterone also increase the activity of the sodium potassium ATPase pump, which helps the reabsorb sodium from tubular cell to pump to the blood while it is taking the huge amount of the potassium. Now what is happening to this potassium? This potassium again secreted from the tubular cell by two processes. One is through the symporter that is a potassium and the chloride symporter and it is secreted to the lumen and another one this channel is present over here that is called renal outer medullary potassium channel these are also helps from for this potassium secretion in the luminal surface in a collecting duct the sodium is generally reabsorbed and the potassium is secreted there is no rigid one for one exchange and much of the movement of the potassium is passive that is through the renal outer, outer medullary potassium channel however there is electrical coupling in the sense that the intracellular migration of the sodium from the lumen tends to lower the potential difference across the tubular cell and this favors the movement of the potassium into the tubular lumen. So there is a formation of the electrical gradient which is formed by this sodium which is pumping out from the tubular cell to the uh, blood and this creating an electrical gradient and which helps the potassium to move out of the cell to the luminal surface. Now coming to the another cell, intercalated cell, as we know there is a non genetic action <coughs> of the aldosterone which helps the increase the activity of the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump. So here we can see the hydrogen potassium ATPase pumps helps the potassium reabsorption while helps the secretion of the hydrogen ion into the luminal surface at the collecting duct level. And after reabsorption of this potassium, actually again this potassium is taken into the blood. So this helps, actually this stimulates, this depletion of the potassium stimulates this hydrogen potassium ATPase activity. So the again potassium is reabsorbed and in turn hydrogen ion is secreted into the lumen. Now aldosterone is given. What's happening here? The patient suffering from primary hyperaldosteronism, uh, there is initially retained sodium because of the prolonged mineral corticoid excess. There is no edema in the individual why it is happening. Initially, there is a sodium uh, reabsorption and sodium is retained. Because sodium is retained, it is an osmotically active particles along with the sodium, the chloride. Few amounts of the water is also reabsorbed. So, what is happening? Extracellular fluid volume is increased. So, increased in central venous pressure or the venous return. Ultimately, what is happening? Blood pressure is rising. But when the extracellular fluid expansion, fluid expansion passes a certain point, that means there is an overstretching of right atrium wall. What is happening? From the right atrial wall, there is secretion of special peptide called atrial natriuretic peptide. There is a meaning of this. Uretic means it is enhances the sodium passing through the urine because of this is secreted from atrium it is called atrial natriuretic peptide which in turns 
inhibit the epithelial <coughs> sodium channel which is which was helping sodium reabsorption from the collecting duct with the action of the aldosterone now because of the inhibition what is happening sodium excretion is usually increased in spite of continued action of mineral or corticoid okay so because of the excretion is there the extracellular fluid volume expansion is slowly decreased and this is called the escape phenomenon but in some field cases this escape phenomena doesn't happen that means the sodium reabsorption continued the disease like cirrhosis and nephrosis the sodium reabsorption continued with the action of hypoaldosteronism and there is edema so now there is a diagrammatic representation of a uh, principal cell and action of aldosterone and now how e ANP inhibiting this uh, sodium reabsorption as we know uh, aldosterone increases the formation of the epithelial sodium channel inside this principal cell and this epithelial sodium channel helps the reabsorption of uh, sodium from luminal surface to the blood now here we can see ANP ANP whenever it is central venous pressure is increasing the ANP starts secreting and this ANP acts on this principal cell what it causes it causes formation of the cyclic GMP inside the cell this cyclic GMP the second messenger it inhibits this dotted line is inhibits this epithelial sodium channel so the sodium secretion through this principal cell continued okay and another one we can see here this is an amyloride amyloride is a potassium sparing diuretics means uh, the few diuretics there is a side effect because of the sodium uh, is reabsorbed the potassium is also secreted and there is a hypokalemia but this amyloride it's a potassium sparing what is happening diuretics continued its action but the potassium secretion is stopped so because this epithelial sodium channel is inhibited by amyloride so the aldosterone as we know it is a mineral corticoid which is a, a sodium retaining hormone and it decreases the potassium level of body when there is hypokalemia